people from All About the House. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a product catalog. So you could use this for a retail catalog if you're selling to wholesalers, if you just want to make a really nice catalog for your customers to have a look at, if you sell invitations, if you sell physical products, digital products, so many different ways that you can use catalogs for holiday promotions, etc. So in my Etsy shop, I have this catalog template, which you can purchase and then customize to suit your business. So I have a whole lot of page layouts that I've created, which you can fully customize. So you can have ones that have only four products per page. You can add all the different color styles that you offer. You can just have one that's just got products. You can have large photos. You could do a feature page if you had like a new um, product coming out or put a whole product range on one collection, etc. And there's also a priceless template as well. Lots of different types of covers. So you can put um, as many pages together as you want. You could have your whole catalog consisting of just this page layout if you wanted to or you could um, mix it up and have a couple of pages like this and then a feature page. You can use the same page for the whole catalog. You can use a different page. You've got so many customization options. So I'm going to show you how to use the template in this video using some products from my sister's shop. So my sister's shop is called Carefully Crafted. If you go on to www.carefullycrafted.com.au, she has a whole lot of products. So like stationery wear, party wear, fabric, like everything. It's basically shopping heaven for women. Um, it's really lots of stuff. Washi tape, so much washi tape. So she's got so many products that she really needs a catalog. So she asked me to make a catalog template. And that's that exact one that I just showed you in my shop. So let's get to it and I'll show you how to use it. So when you purchase the file, you download it and it comes in a zipped folder. So you'll get a um, JPEG version of each so you can easily see which of the layouts it is before having to click on the Photoshop template. So have a look around and you can double left click to increase it. So let's say that I wanted to use this page layout. You can customize all this by the way. Um, this page layout, you just navigate to where that's saved in the folders. There are a series of zip folders because it's such a large file size. So download them all, combine them all into one folder, and then pick the Photoshop file that you want to use. So I've just gone um, and copied some photos from her website, or she's given me some photos to put on the page. So once you open up that Photoshop file that you want to use, you just double left click on the Photoshop file and it will open it up for you. So this is the page layer I'm going to use. This one's a really good simple one. I've got all the layers named for you. So you just need to bring in your photos, update the text, add your logo, and you're done. So come back to where you've got your pictures. You can left click and drag these in individually, but it's way quicker if you left click and drag to highlight all of them. And then um, with all of them selected, left click and drag to drop them into Photoshop. And just press enter until you've got them all imported. So you can fully customize these templates. If you wanted to, you could delete these three products in the center and add your own text. You could um, delete this here and put like 15% off if you wanted to have a discount page. You can customize everything on the page. You can update all the text, complete control over the design. So I've got them in row. So we've got row one and then row one position three. So that's this one. Row one position two is the middle one and row one position one is this one. So all you need to do once you've got your photos is left click, choose a photo that you want. So let's use um, this one. And then left click and drag it above the layer that you want to clip it to. So these are some really nice gold foil serviettes. You just go right click, create clipping mask. Now you'll notice that it's actually cut off a bit because our photo is too big. So that's good. You want to start with a photo that's big and then shrink it down to suit the size of the catalog. You don't want to start with a small image and increase it because it will be blurry. So with that layer selected, press Ctrl T on your keyboard, hold down Shift, left click and drag your mouse inwards and just keep dragging in until it fits the page. So I highly recommend using photos that have a white background because it makes everything look way more professional. If you've got all busy stuff in the background, like people can see your dirty washing, like no, do not put that in your catalog. You want it to look really professional and you want a white background on all your photos. So if you're not very good at taking photos or the lighting's bad, try this website called PhotoFuse. Um, you can remove the backgrounds and create a white background using that tool. You can also use Photoshop, but it takes a bit longer. Um, and there's another tutorial that I found on one of my other blogs that I like to read 
um, and she had a really great tutorial on how she removes the white backgrounds um, and you don't need any online tool or Photoshop. It's, I think it's just in PowerPoint. So I'll include the link to that um, tutorial as well. So when you've got your photo um, in there and you're happy with the size of it, you can use the little arrow keys to reposition it above that box and you can press Control T to shrink it further if you want to. So you don't want to see any of this white box over here, so just make sure it's covering it. So I'll just make it a smidge bigger. Cool. So that's our first product in. Um, so now we can update the text. So I've just got a little guideline here of some text you might put. You can change this to any that you want um, to suit your product and you can also change the font. So the font that I've used here is called Gil Sands. You'll need to download that font. It's not one that comes pre-installed on computers. Um, you'll need to download it if you want to use that one. Otherwise, you can use any font that you want. If you want to use your brand's font, you just want to use a simple font. Um, I like it's Myriad Pro or My Myad My Myriad, My, Myriad Pro or Myriad or whatever, however you pronounce that. That's a nice simple one as well. Um, if you didn't want to use Gil Sands or use whatever font aligns with your brand, if you want to, so that one's very similar. All right, so this one you would put your product name. So these are gold foil chevron serviettes. I'm not sure how you spell serviettes. So I should really Google that one. Make sure you do double check your spelling before you type it in because Photoshop does not have spell check. Um, so I like to just type it in a Word doc. And so I don't think that's spelled right. I'll need to check that spelling um, before it goes to print. And then the SKU code, so that's your unique product code. So, for example, the planner stickers in my shop, I use a different code for each size. So my half-inch square stickers have the code HIS, first letter of each of those words, and then a number. So the first half-inch square sticker I ever created was called HIS001. You could have just done HIS1, whatever you want to call it. You might do um, Party Serviette 1, so PS1 could be the code for this. You can do any product coding system that you want. And then if you're doing a wholesale catalog, you might require a minimum order quantity. So they need to order three. And then the price um, for each of them is five bucks or however much you want to charge. And you could um, put in here a discount if you wanted to. So if they purchase 10, they can get them for two bucks each or whatever you want to put. Um, if they were, for example, a pre-order or you're not going to have them in stock for a couple of months, you can choose the date that they're available or you can use this space for um, like bulk discount quantity and that might be 10 for we said two dollars each so you can put whatever text that you want in here if you don't need to use all of these lines for text you can increase the font size if you press control a on your keyboard you can then bump up the size if you want to or shrink it down if you've got a lot of text to put in I wouldn't recommend going any smaller than font size 8 because then it gets quite hard to read um, you want to make sure that it's not looking too cluttered either because if you make it a really small font you've got all this text it's going to look a bit messy. So that's how you update one. You would just go through and repeat that for each of the products. You can add your business name. So this one is for my sister's shop which is called Carefully Crafted. And then you can add the email address. Um, if you were doing like this is the spring catalog, this is the Christmas holiday special, um, wholesale catalog 2016, whatever you wanted to put. You can put the email address, any other details that you want in this um, header section. You can bring in the logo. Um, and down the bottom here, you can update this as well. So you would just put your business name. This one's carefully crafted. And just delete the sample text out and then put in the website address and then if you wanted to put in the catalog edition and date you can do that you could just put like 2016 or you can just delete this text altogether if you didn't want to um, she's on Instagram so you could just put the Instagram name so whatever you wanted um, to put there you could put your blog etc you get the idea if you didn't want these lines which I've got in there you can simply hide them so if you click this line um, sorry this button here It'll turn that line off and you can turn it off down the bottom as well if you just want to keep it really simple or you can turn them back on. So my sister's brand colors are black and white, keeping it simple. But if you had, um, for example, let's say your brand color was pink, you can change these lines. You can change all the text color as well to suit your brand. So if you double left click on this little box here that's got these um, square corners on it, you can change the color. 
So you can choose any color from the color picker tool and you'll see how it's live updating so we can see exactly what that color is going to look like. So if you wanted to go with a gray, you want to change to a bright blue, you can use your brand colors. If you know what the color code is, you can type it straight in here, the RGB code or the six digit hex code. And then you can make sure that your catalog looks nice and professional on brand, etc. To change the color of text, if you wanted to, you would just um, get the type tool, left click to click on that type layer. I've got them all in separate layers, so it's really easy to change them. Um, you can change one, so if you press Control A, click on that layer and then change the color. But let's say that you wanted to change them all at once. Just click on that text layer, press Control, and then click on the other ones and you would change the font color and hit OK. So now they've all updated all at once. If you're not seeing your um, characters menu, just go to Window and make sure Character is ticked and it will show up on the right here. You can um, change your text this way as well. So I've got the same text for all, um, text style for all of the text on the page, but you could have your, um, you could have a fancy font if that's what your logo looks like and then just a simple font for your products. I don't recommend using a cursive font or italics or anything that's busy and hard to read. You want to choose a nice simple easy to read font for this section. You can go a bit fancy up the top if you wanted to with your shop name. Um, so let's say you wanted to add in your logo. So I've got the logo I created for my sister's shop. Her name's Joanna. So we just left click on the logo file and drag and drop it into Photoshop and hit enter. So her logo is round. What I'm going to do is move it up to the top here. So I've just left clicked on the image and dragged it up. At the moment it's in our row one folder. I just want to take it out of there because it's not part of row one. Oops, that's the grid lines, the margin. Okay, so now we've got our logo. So I'll just quickly go through these ones. So if you are playing around with the template and you want to redesign it, I've got these margins set up. So these are the suggested print margins. It's a 1.5 centimeter margin on the left and the right sides. So I've just made them hot pink so it's easy to see and distinguish and so to, you remember to turn these off. You can hide layers by clicking the eye icon. You don't want to leave these on. They're just as a guide to make sure that you don't have any graphics, text, etc. extending beyond the edges of these print margins because it may get cut off when it's printing, if you're going to get it bound, if you're going to have spiral bind or thermal binding, etc. into a notebook then you want to make sure that you have enough room for that if you're hole punching, etc. So I've got these guides for you so you know where to um, leave your text. And I wouldn't recommend putting your text any lower on the page than this is. And same with the, uh, with the top because it may get cut off as well. Um, if you're printing at home and your printer has the option to do borderless printing, make sure you choose borderless. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention is that these templates come in both RGB and CMYK color mode. So RGB color mode you would use if you're just printing at home. CMYK you would use if you are having it um, professionally printed, for example, at an office supply store. And if you wanted to just have it a digital catalog, you can upload it to a site such as Issue, or Issue, however you say it. I think it's I-S-S-W. I'll include a link below this video. So you can upload your catalog to there, and then if you've got any um, people that are interested in stocking your products, you can just send them the link to the catalog or um, shout out on your Instagram, etc. Okay, so back to the logo. We've got the logo layer selected. Press Control T on your keyboard and now we can uh, resize it. So at the moment it's a bit big. If we hold down Shift, left click and drag inwards, we can resize it. So I'm just going to make it quite small at the top here. And I'm going to oops, I'm gonna zoom in so I can see better. If you press Control on the plus sign on your keyboard, you can zoom in. If you want to zoom back out, just press Control on the minus sign. Okay, so I've zoomed in and now I'm going to left click and drag it across because I want this to appear up the top here in line with my text. So you can eyeball where you want it to go and press enter when you're happy with it. But if you want to, make sure that it's perfectly aligned. So I want the logo to be aligned with my text here. I would click on my logo layer, got that selected because it's highlighted in blue. Hold down control and click on the text that says carefully crafted and then click this button here and it will make sure that it's all aligned to the center. So it will automatically do it for you. Now we've got the same amount of space between the top of that letter and the top of our logo, and same with the bottom of the letter and the bottom of the logo. So this is one of the main reasons I prefer to use Photoshop for these types of things, because the align tools are so awesome. They align things perfectly for you. You don't have to sit here and try and eyeball it like you would have to in Word. 
to make sure it's all nicely aligned. So our logo is probably a little bit big. I'm going to shrink it down a smidge more. So I've just clicked on that layer, press Control T to engage the um, Move tool, and Resize tool, or whatever you want to call it. Hold down Shift in one of the corners and drag inwards. It's very important that you choose one of the corners to resize because if you choose one of the middle ones, it's going to get distorted. And if you hold down Shift, it will maintain its proportions. So if your logo was a square or a rectangle, for example, ugh, getting tongue-tied, for example, um, make sure you hold down Shift and it will keep it all um, the same size so nothing looks stretched and yucky. So I've got that logo layer. Hold down Control and click on your text and then press that button again. Cool, so that's looking pretty good. Now we can add... Um, the catalog edition if we wanted to, so we could do um, wholesale catalog and this is the uh, 2016 edition or whatever you, you wanted to put and then you could put your email address, so email at whatever your email address is going to be. Um, try not to make it too cluttered with a whole bunch of text, you could have your um, address if you've got a physical address as well. Um, you could just put your email address down the bottom here and not at the top if you wanted to. So that's how you do like one one page setup. So once you've set this up for one page with all of your header, etc., you can then get a, another page. So let's go to, for example, this one, another page layout, and you can then copy that across to the other template. So you don't have to redo, rebring in your logo, redo the text, etc. You can just duplicate it to the new page layout. So what you want to do is click on your layer. So we've got this text layer here selected because it's highlighted in blue. If you hold down control and then click on your carefully crafted text, keep holding down control and click on your logo layer. You can drag this down in your layers menu if you wanted to so it's all together. And again, hold down control and click on that bottom text. Then you want to right click over the top of your layers menu on one of the layers that you've got highlighted in blue and choose duplicate layers. Now from this drop down menu you want to choose the other um, template that you've opened up, click that one and hit OK. So now if we go to that template we can see that it's automatically added it to that template for us. Sweet, we don't have to redo all of that again. So you can just delete these layers now and it will have the logo all there. So I really like that you can duplicate and quickly switch it in between. You can't do that with Word. Um, one of the main reasons I prefer to use Photoshop for these types of things. So if you duplicate it across, it'll keep everything in the same position. So you'll notice when I'm flicking between these that these don't move. So when you print, it's going to look very nice and even and everything on your header and your footer will appear in the same position, looking very professional. So this is one of the other page layouts where I've added in a little swatch menu for the available colors. So let's say you had, for example, a cushion and you offered it in a whole bunch of different colors. You can then update this little color swatch menu with each of the colors that you have. So if you didn't want to print like 100 pages and you offer heaps of different options or you do personalized products, um, this is a great way to save paper and still show people all the different options. So you would have one photo image, for example, the blue version, and then down here you could show that you've also got it in pink, purple, green, etc. So if we go to the row one folder, and this is position one. Um, so this would be where you clip your layer, clip your photo to the, this layer so it covers up this gray box and then update your text. And then I've got it up here in a separate folder as an optional menu. If you want to see what's in the layers more, just left click and drag this out. Doesn't want to participate. Normally you can drag that out to see better. Um, so if you click on that little drop down arrow, we can now see the available colors menu. So this one here, if we press Control T, we can see that we've now got our first little um, box available that we can change the color of. So if you left click, double left click in this square here, just like we did when we changed the color before, and then you can choose from the color picker tool and it'll update it. But if you've got a product, you can color match it. So let's say we wanted to color match this gray here, um, sorry, gray, um, this gold you would click this button here, the eyedropper tool, and then click to find that color for you. Or you could bring your photo in again. Let's go to this one here. Let's bring in these cute plates. Left click and drag it in and press enter. And now when you go to recolor it, double left click, and you can just click straight on that photo and it'll find the color for you as well and then hit OK. 
So now we've got our little gold down the bottom here. You can repeat that again. So let's say the next color was red and then the next one was blue. You can choose it from there. If you know the color code, you can type it straight in or again, just color match all your different color options. So then you can add those in. If you don't need row two, you can just hide that. If you've only got four colors, you can turn that layer off. You can remove these around. So if you didn't want this big white space here, you could um, leave the last layer on, turn off that layer, click on your last position square, hold down control, and then click on the other boxes that have your colors in it. Go to the move tool and hit this button and it'll re-space it for you. So now we've got an even amount of space in between each of these. If you didn't need five, if you do, just turn that layer back on. Click on that layer, hold down control to highlight these ones, and then click this button and it'll re-put it back to five. So you really need to use that align tool because it will automatically space it for you and it will look nice and even and consistent and very professional. If you didn't need the available colors menu, you would just click this button here and it will hide everything in that folder so you just have your product um, details. You could add a little description about the product if you wanted to. So this product is great for a wedding gift, a honeymoon, bridesmaids gift, party, school, etc. You could do a little blurb about it. You could use some of the ways that you can use the product. Um, or you can just leave it blank with some white space. Don't underestimate white space. It makes it look nice. If you start adding a lot of stuff, it can look a bit cluttered. If you want to add a description about the product, then I would choose one of the more feature pages. So that would be, for example, this one. Then you can have just one photo of your product and you can add in all these details. So you could have your product pages with lots of photos on them, for example, this one here. And then at the start of that, you could do a feature page for the um, product collection, introducing it, um, your inspiration behind the collection. And then you could do some of your wholesale terms of use. So I've put in some suggested ones. You can type in any that are applicable to your shop or change them. You could do the story behind you made the product, how to use it, special wash and wear instructions, etc. So the great thing about these templates is you can use as many or as few as you need. If you want to make a catalog that consists only of this page layout, you can totally do that. Um, just one thing to note, once you have created your page, make sure you go File, Save As, and save it as a new name. So you might change this one to, for example, Page 1. Or um, like if you were doing your Spring Catalog, you might go SC1. So Spring Catalog, Page 1. I do like to use codes. Um, coding system because then if you search on your computer you can bring up all the files and easily find them that way um, and if you type out really long file names so if I typed out spring collection one that file name is going to be really long and long file names um, can get lost the file path and then you can lose the file so just try and use abbreviations it makes it, um, the file name not as long keep it in Photoshop file format and hit save when you are ready to save the catalog you would change it to JPEG file format um, if you wanted to use JPEG and then save it, make sure that you save the Photoshop file before you save as a PDF. Super important. Once you save as a PDF, you can't revert back to the original Photoshop file. So if you've made any changes since you last saved it, but before you saved it to a PDF, you're going to lose them. You don't want to modify your PDF and resave as a PDF again, because every single time you do that, the photo quality, the image quality will reduce. Things will start getting pixelated and blurry with fuzzy edges and it's going to look pretty crap. So you want to go File, Save As, save your Photoshop file, go Save, and then come back again and go File, Save As. This Save button should be grayed out. And when it's grayed out, it means that everything up until the last thing that you've done has been saved. And then you can change it to PDF file format and then add in your name and hit Save again. You can then use, I use Adobe Professional to combine your PDF files together to make your catalog. You can also use a free online um, tool. I'm sure you can use one of them to convert the PDF files together to make your catalog and arrange it in any order that you want. Um, so I've just showed you with one example of one product here. I'm just going to go and fill the rest of the page. I'll pause the video while I do that just to show you what the finished product looks like. So I'm back and I've filled out the whole um, catalog page with all of the products. So it's looking pretty good. Um, one thing to note, if you have used small photos and they don't fill the box when you've reduced the size of them, it's a quick and easy fix. 
If you press Control alt on your keyboard and then click on the box, it'll take you to the folder that has that um, item in it. And we can see that it's row 2 and it's position 1. So if you double left click here on that little square, and then with the eyedropper tool you can just select white anywhere on the page, or you can type in the color code for white, which is 255 for each of the RGB codes and 6 Fs for the um, hex codes, so either or, and then hit OK. So now it will get rid of that um, gray edge there. So I prefer to use white as the background for catalogs because it makes the text easier to read and also saves on printing costs. If you had, for example, a black background with white text, it's hard to read. It's going to use up a lot of ink and it's going to be very expensive to print. So I always recommend using a white background and then a white background also for your photos. So this is what the finished catalog page looks like. It looks pretty good. You can add in... Um, I've done some sample text, so you could change it from um, available, you could have the bulk discount quantity, you could do its pre-order but when it's going to be available. Um, if you had, for example, this was showing all of a preview image from each of your different product collections. So this whole page is the gold party collection, but let's say that you had a lot, so you had a gold party collection, you had a rose gold, you have a black, etc. You could show a photo for each of those previews and then put coordinating items available. So this could be like your front page um, to give people a preview of what's in the rest of the catalog. Um, and then I've also got a suggested um, thing down here so it's perfect for weddings. If you're doing a retail catalog and people are like, oh, what could I use this for? You give them some ideas. And then minimum order quantity. So there's 25 in a packet because obviously you're not going to be shipping out like one gift tag. That's a bit stupid. You would have 25 in your pack but they have to buy three packets at a minimum and the wholesale price is five dollars per packet or whatever you wanted to charge. Um, that one you could say it's available in December 2016 so you could be like this is what's coming up if you're interested um, and then you could put the um, recommended retail price or the RRP if you wanted to. You could have a bulk discount so they could get 20% off if they order eight or more packets etc. So that's just some suggestions of what you could use these catalog templates for. So that's basically the finished product. All you need to do is bring in your photos, update your text, and that's literally it. Make sure that you save a copy of the original template so you can reuse that each time you want to make a new page of your catalog. If, for example, you were sold out of something and you wanted to just switch out one picture, by saving a copy of the page, so I've just saved this one as just carefully crafted, you could do like page one, etc. You can just reopen that page, delete out that photo, bring in the new one and update it, and you're good to go. So once you do the work once, if it's you're having products that are always going to be in, in your shop, um, but if you wanted to just show what were available, you can quickly update it that way. I highly recommend that you save both the original copy of the templates so you can come back and reuse them, and also the version where you've added in all your products if you want to make changes to it later, um, or if you wanted to take this page layout, um, this design, and put it on one of the other catalog templates that were similar. For example, if you wanted to copy it across to this one here, you would have your photos already sized. You can just duplicate it across rather than bringing it in, resizing it again. So remember to duplicate. You just right click on that layer, hit duplicate, and choose the document that you want to send it to, just like we did with the uh, logo for the header and the footer. So if you have any questions about using this template, just leave me a comment below this video or send me an email via all lowercase letters and all is one word all about the house Etsy at gmail.com and I will um, get back to you as soon as possible. So I hope you found this tutorial helpful. Um, I really like these catalog templates. They really speed up the efficiency. Everything looks nice and neat and in alignment and it looks really professional. So I hope you found this tutorial helpful and if you have any questions just send me an email or comment below.